I always wanted to be a writer from when I was very young. In fact, I think that the reason that, that I started acting was because I loved performing my own stories. I loved making up stories and then performing them on my own. So storytelling was really my greatest passion from a very young age. As soon as I knew what a story was, I wanted to tell them, I wanted to make them up. There was nothing better than a story. So that has been something that has followed me through my life while I was acting, while I was performing, and uh, I would be in my trailer between shots, writing stories and writing all kinds of things, uh, scripts and screenplays and plays and musicals and uh, all kinds of things that I, I really love to do. Uh, I was also a big reader from when I was pretty young, so I loved reading and I loved writing. So I always was, I, so I wrote a lot for a really long time, but I wasn't quite sure which direction I wanted to go in. Uh, I was really good at writing essays in school and short stories, but then in college, I started writing plays, and that's really when something clicked for me. I thought, oh, okay, this is something I could do. I also started doing live storytelling where I would tell stories about my life on stage, and that was something that also really resonated with me, and that was something that came, I suppose, relatively easily to me and was really fun to do. So. I, I started doing both of those and really fell in love with that and felt like that was really the kind of writing that I wanted to do. And it's still the kind of writing that I want to do. I have my book, Where Am I Now, which is out there, but I, I've also written plays and I want to write way more. I mean, I love dramatic writing. I love to write plays and screenplays and TV and things like that. So that's definitely something that uh, I want to work on for the future. But yeah, I mean, I've always loved writing. I've, done, I've been doing comedy writing and essay writing for the past couple of years now. Uh, and I really am lucky in that I am happy when I'm writing anything. So it doesn't really even matter what it is. Like I said, obviously, I really love, uh, I really love my essays and I really love uh, writing dialogue, but I'm just happy when I'm writing. I do think that we have a tendency as a society at, and in this day and age to sort of go for instant gratification. And I'm guilty of this as well. There's times when I procrastinate on Twitter far more than I should. But uh, I think that we definitely do feel like we want an audience and we cater to an audience. The problem with that is that sometimes we don't end up thinking things through. And like I said, this is something that I'm guilty of as well. It's definitely something that I've done. I try to uh, play the long game. I try to uh, make sure that I can do things that are uh, going to last a while, that are thought through. And what I usually advise people if they ask me for writing advice, which is kind of funny to me that they'd ask me for advice, but it's nice of them. What I say is writing is like coffee. It needs to be filtered first. It's really hard to get something really quality. It's, it's hard to get something to a place of good quality. And I think that if you just put it on the internet right away, it might not say exactly what you want it to say. I would say that you should you know, think about it and rewrite it uh, a couple of times. And that's why when I had a blog, it took me a while to put any blog posts up because I would take a really long time to write them. Uh, I don't update the blog so much anymore because I have opportunities to write elsewhere. And so I have been putting my energy into that instead. Uh, I do think there are people who can, you know, put things out very easily, do really well with that, but, uh, but not all of us have that gift. So I think that is something to be careful about that. Uh, I also try to be sure I've looked at all sides of an issue and researched things beforehand. I definitely, you know, I do consider myself an activist and political in some ways, but at the same time, I don't want to just be parroting talking points and I don't want to be unfair to anybody. You know, the last thing I want is to hurt or upset somebody, and if I do, I want to be able to apologize and understand where they are coming from because I, I think that that's important. I think it's important to be empathetic and I think it's also very important to admit when you're wrong. And uh, I think that that's something that you also learn a lot when you're editing your own work, is that you need to be able to admit when you were wrong and cut things out. I think learning to admit that I was wrong is one of the best things I've learned to do. And uh, I need to do it even more than I do. Well, I think there are different ways of getting involved in different things. I mean, it, uh, I think that everybody has their own ways of expressing themselves, and I would tell them to be doing that. One of my brothers has said that he believes that any artistic work that a person does is, is a, he says it's a net good for society and for the world because even if nobody's seeing it, it's going to be making that person happy or it's cathartic. And uh, we talked about this a little bit and I said, I don't know, I think theoretically there could be artwork out there that's, you know, disturbing or upsetting that maybe isn't a net positive for the world. But, uh, but he thinks that, uh, he believes that it is, it is good. And I'm, I don't know, sometimes I'm starting to believe 
I'm starting to think he might be more right, you know. I also think, I do think that we need to be more careful about what we put out there, what we uh, use to represent ourselves. But uh, I think that there are so many different ways to start. There's so many different ways to begin. Uh, I, I do like the idea of people uh, going out and, and doing more things and realizing that nobody has their own unique voice and their own unique experiences, which is why I've loved live storytelling for a long time. I did that in New York, and it was great because you had stories of people who grew up overseas, who grew up in other countries. You had people from all different backgrounds and religions and races and ethnicities and all kinds of people with all kinds of different stories coming out and telling their stories. And that is the thing, is that nobody has the same story. Everybody has a different story. And you can break it down into terms of form and content when you're writing. Form is, you know, people who really change the game and what they're writing and how they write. But everybody has a story to tell, and it's just about learning to tell that story. And it can be very hard. I mean, I, I've had this a lot, too, where you look at your friends, you look at peers, and I, I have a lot of friends who are way more talented writers than I am who are writing here and there that have awards, and it's kind of, it can be kind of hard, right? Uh, it can be kind of hard looking at that to think, oh, what am I doing? But they're, they don't have your story, they don't have your life, they don't have your circumstances. Uh, I also think it's important to remember that success is not going to be the way that you particularly imagine it. It's going to be different than, than you think. Uh, but that's okay. And I think that sometimes you need to moderate your expectations for your own peace and, and sanity. And, uh, and, you know, and if, I think it's also important, the, the uh, sort of paradoxical nature of things, of art, is if only you could see it, or only, you know, one other person could see it, you know, if, uh, like I always tell people who want to be actors, okay, probably the first time you acted, it was on stage at school, it was in front of a crowd. If you never had a crowd bigger than that, would you still be okay with it? And if they say, no, I want fame, I say, okay, well, you know what, you're bound to get disappointed. Being famous, you're bound to get disappointed. So I think that that's really important to consider. Is this something that you really love? Uh, they, you know, there's the irony there that the more famous you want to be, the more you want to recognition for it, the less likely you're going to have it, or you're going to get it and you're going to be miserable. It's a very Twilight Zone scenario, fame. Uh, and you'll never feel like you're famous enough. So you can't do it because of that. It is it is definitely nice. I'm not going to say no one should want to be famous, no one should want attention, because, I mean, I'll admit it, I like attention. Uh, <laughs> and I think most people do. Most people do, at least the kind of attention that they want. So I think that that's, uh, that's something that's, uh, you know, you can, you can still like attention, but you really need to be doing it for what it means to you personally, for, for the catharsis, for the good feeling you get, for being able to connect with others and reach out to others. I definitely would love to do fiction writing. I've done a little bit of fiction writing and uh, I'm still a bit nervous about putting some of it out there because fiction prose isn't necessarily where I, uh, what my strong suit is, I think, at least not yet. But I want to get more practice in that because I do have a lot of ideas. Uh, I grew up reading a lot of genre fiction, a lot of uh, you know science fiction and speculative fiction and fantasy, but I've never tried to write any until recently. And recently I was like, oh, maybe I can do this. I thought, I thought for a very long time, I'm just a very pragmatic person. I'm going to be writing you know, realistic fiction for the rest of my life, uh, if I do it at all. And it's not that I don't love that, but I'm starting to think now, oh, maybe I don't need to limit myself. I think that that's an important thing. I think it is important to be realistic and pragmatic about your goals and your skills and to look at yourself honestly. But at the same time, uh, I don't say never say never, I say try not to say never. Because that is, never say never is an absolute in itself. So uh, yeah, there's so much more that I want to write. Uh, that said, yeah, I, I do think that you shouldn't limit yourself, but I also think that it is good to have practical goals. So I've said uh, my goals for the next few years are things that are easily achievable. Like I could probably write another book. I would like to write another book at some point in my life. I would like to write a screenplay. I would like to you know, do, do more like that. So I feel like uh, it's, it's uh, you know, definitely, definitely let yourself dream and don't limit yourself, but uh, be practical about your goals. That I think is, is uh, you know, and that way you can't lose. <laughs>